Just one day changed professional racing forever. Oh, and a huge off that's Jack Clark! This incident showed the world how deadly motorsports can be. Meet Henry Surtees, an 18-year-old British driver. He has already made a name for himself on the Formula 2 championship. Henry's performances demonstrated his potential and skill as a racer, but it all was quickly taken away from him. Henry loved racing from a young age. At five years, he won the Winter Karting Championship. That was just the beginning. Later in 2006, Henry won the Ginetta GT Juniors. In 2008, Surtis took part in two British Formula 3 races. He immediately impressed the audience with one victory and two podiums to finish 11th in the standings. Surtees quickly showed his talent and willingness to learn and was known for his exceptional dedication to the sport. The young racer looked up to his legendary father. Who is he? John Surtees is the only man to win the world championship on two and four wheels. He scored 38 Grand Prix wins and six TT victories throughout his career. John's special achievement was his championship in the blue and white Ferrari. 12 minutes. Little doubt he'll one day be world champion. So it's no wonder that Henry Surtees only one dream was to get into Formula One. Especially when in 2009, Formula Two promised that the champion would get a test at Williams in addition to the cash prize. In his best race, the young man took the podium for the first time in the series for third place during Saturday's competition. It was an impressive result and promising start, but this podium was his last. There was a disaster in the next race that changed the formula forever. There were 24 Formula 2 cars on that grid. Each of them was equipped with 1.8 liter Audi turbo engines, which can produce up to 450 horsepower. The car met the standards of 2009, but a very unexpected event happened. During the race at Brands Hatch, his colleague Jack Clark hit the wall. As a result, the rear wheel came off the cable and bounced back. Visually, this accident didn't look serious, but pay attention. The wheel bounced into the middle of the track, where Surtees was coming out of the Westfield turn. The wheel, with weight about 29 kilograms, hit Henry directly in the head at about 100 miles per hour. It instantly knocked him out. To make things worse, his foot was still on the gas pedal. Surtees car continued down the highway at high speed and collided with a wall. Even when his car came to a stop, he was still holding the gas. When marshals arrived at the wreckage, they noticed that Henry's helmet visor was partially open. The race was immediately stopped, and Surtees was given first aid at the racetrack. His condition was stabilized, and they rushed him to one of the best hospitals in England. Unfortunately, he died from injuries. It was established that the main cause of death was a wheel strike to the head, not a collision with a barrier. Before the race at Donington Park, the Formula 2 community paid tribute to Henry Surtees. His car took the pole position, and the Formula 2 drivers and team gathered behind it for a minute of silence. All cars had stickers in memory of Henry on their rear wings. This tragic incident shocked the racing world, emphasizing the urgent need for better safety. So Henry's father immediately called for stronger security measures in the racing sport. He sent a warning to all FIA-sanctioned events. We have to make sure his death was not in vain. There will be progress. This is the way of motorsport and competitive people. There is something to learn, Surtees' father told BBC South News. The first victory came in 2011, when the FIA announced that the number of wheel binders would double to two ahead of the 2011 Formula One season. This tragedy also led to the creation of the Henry Surtees Foundation. It has become a symbol of indomitable spirit. The foundation has gone beyond the racing circuit, offering support and solace to those who experienced brain and physical injuries. John Surtees tried to fight every day, but his efforts weren't enough. Another fatal incident was the decisive moment. What made the FIA, the most incompetent motorsports organization in the world, act shamefully? October 5th, 2014, Suzuka Circuit. Due to the heavy rain, many cars lost control there. One of them was Adriana Sutila's vehicle. For safety reasons, a crane was sent to remove his car from the track. However, the next moment, the tragedy was inexorably approaching because Jules Bianchi lost control of his car and collided with the crane. He was riding at a speed of over 200 kilometers per hour. The rain completely excluded the possibility of helicopter evacuation. Therefore, he was transported by ambulance, which took a lot of time. Despite the efforts of doctors, Bianchi's injuries were too critical. 
He remained in a coma until his death in July 2015. The FIA had to rethink its safety in Formula One. That's why in 2018, they introduced the Halo, an engineering masterpiece that is impossible not to be impressed by. Its design is so robust that it can support the weight of a huge London bus. Just imagine, 12 tons. I absolutely love this invention. It saves lives and makes fucking money. Because Halo offers sponsorship spots. But can it obstruct with the driver? Imagine your nose. LOL. When the driver looks ahead, he doesn't notice Halo like you don't notice your nose. It's almost like magic. The FIA has made it mandatory not only for Formula One, but also for other junior categories. Halo increases driver safety by a colossal 17%. Simulations have shown that if Halo was installed on Henry's car, he could have survived the accident. However, you wouldn't believe that this technology has been criticized by many people. This may shock you, but the reason was the look. It's as stupid as sausage curbs. For example, Max Verstappen, always a shining beacon of reason, thought Halo wasn't only ugly, but unnecessary. Risk is good, he argued. We don't need this thing on the roof of the car. It's not just about looks. I don't think it's necessary. But haven't we forgotten how many lives have been lost on the highway? Halo soon proved its worth. He saved Lewis Hamilton from a broken spine when Max decided to run over the Lewis. Those damn sausage curbs. And what about the case of Romain Grosjean in 2020? He got into one of the worst accidents in recent years. As they exited out of turn three, and that looks very nasty indeed, and unsurprisingly, that is a red flag. His car was torn in half and turned into a fireball like a phoenix. Fortunately, Romain managed to get out of the inferno. I wasn't for the halo some years ago, but I think it's the greatest thing that we've brought to Formula One, and without it, I wouldn't be able to speak to you today, Grosjean said. And here is the story of Guang Yu Zhou in 2022. He overturned his Alfa Romeo at Silverstone and ended up in the safety fence. Once again, despite one of the worst accidents in Formula One, Halo proved that it can save lives again and again. Sadly, John Surtees didn't live to see the Formula One season with the introduction of Halo as he passed away in March 2017. John was one of the first to fight for driver safety. Halo changed the history of motorsport, but the price was very high. We lost invaluable talent, the first of which was John's son, Henry Surtees. However, John and Henry's contribution to motorsport safety went beyond Halo. After Henry's death, his parents decided to donate his organs and saved five more lives. And that was just the beginning of the charity. Henry's foundation, HSF, supported victims of brain injury and upgrade safety in motorsports. It has significantly improved many lives including working with airline services in the UK to implement an onboard blood program. Over the 12 years of its existence, HSF has spent almost a million pounds on charity. The foundation touched the hearts of many by organizing fundraisers and supporting the community, but its journey came to an end a few years after John's death in 2017. Family representatives said that it's not the same organization without the founders. Their lives inspire us to make a difference. May they rest in peace.